properly functioning aircraft is a safe aircraft, one that you can depend upon. In order to ensure reliability and dependability, be thoroughly familiar with safe pre-flight procedures and follow them according to the checklist. Do this and you can depend on your aircraft. Keep in mind throughout your pre-flight that all critical bolts and screws are torqued to specified foot-pounds. If there are any questions raised as an area is inspected, call a technical inspector who will verify the condition of the component in doubt. The appropriate Dash 10 checklist must be used for the model of aircraft being flown. This pre-flight will be based on the UH-1H model and the correct checklist to use is TM-55 Dash 1520-210CL. This pre-flight begins with a check of required publications. At this time, be certain the 2408-12 is for the aircraft you are about to fly. Enter the date, names of pilots, and the appropriate pilot duty and mission symbols for the flight. On the 2408-13, enter the date also, and note the aircraft's time to date, time to periodic inspection, intermediate inspection, and number of hot starts. Check the status of the aircraft and ensure that the daily inspection has been completed. Any aircraft discrepancies are to be noted and entered. Now turn to the 2408-14 and note the discrepancies that have been carried forward. Only deficiencies on a dash or diagonal condition symbol may be entered in the dash 14. With the completion of the publications check, proceed to the overhead panel. Turn the battery switch on. Turn on the anti-collision light. See that the light is functioning. Then turn the light off. If this is to be a night flight, a check should also be made of the searchlight, landing light, and position lights. Next, check the fuel quantity. Place the cap, making certain it is secure, with the locking latch trailing to prevent interference with opening of the cargo door. Proceed to the right rear fuel drain, where you will begin checking for fuel contamination. You will need assistance for this check. Depress the right rear drain valve, drawing off fuel and inspecting for contamination. The right forward drain is checked next. Then repeat the procedure with the left forward and rear drains.
Now the main fuel switch must be placed in the on position so that pressure is applied to the fuel lines and fuel filter. Move to the engine compartment and inspect the fuel lines for leaks. Check for security of connections leading to and from the fuel filter. Then drain the filter by opening the drain valve. Note, ensure that the drain valve is fully closed for flight. The collected fuel is inspected for any fuel contamination. If no contamination is present in the fuel, you are complete on your checklist thus far. Turn off the main fuel switch and the battery. The engine oil level is next on the pre-flight checklist. Move to the right-hand side of the aircraft to check the oil level. Be certain the oil filler cap is tight and does not show any leak. Now look at the side gauge on the engine oil reservoir. The oil level must be between the high and low level lines. Now check the hydraulic fluid sight gauge. On H models, the sight gauge is located forward of the mast and on the right side of the cabin top. Make certain the reservoir is full. Proceed to the forward fuselage and continue with the pre-flight procedures by visually checking the condition of the main rotor blade. You are inspecting for skin wrinkles, dents, and scratches. Now observe the cabin roof, ensuring that the ventilators are undamaged. Check the windshield wipers for position and damage. Check the windshields for cleanliness, damage, and excessive scratches, particularly in the area of wiper operation. The UH-1H pre-flight continues by checking the radio compartment. Check security of all components and avionics gear. If the battery is located in the front of the aircraft, check for security and tight connection of the battery cable. Check the vent lines to be sure they are open and free from obstructions and that the battery inverter circuit breakers are positioned in. Check the compartment door for condition. Now, assure the door is secure. Move now to the cabin lower area and inspect the chin bubble for cracks and missing rivets. Visually inspect the anti-torque pedals for security and confirm that there are no loose objects which might jam the foot pedal controls. Now the landing and search lights are checked as being in the stowed position. Move now to the left side of the fuselage and check the safety belt and shoulder harness. Be sure that they are secure if seat is not to be used for this flight. Now check the navigation lights. They must be secure and in good condition. Open the entrance door and check it for condition and operation. Check the ejection mechanism. Now close the door and 
and ensure that the two pins on the ejection mechanism are protruding. Now go to the emergency door and see that it has no damage and is locked. The cargo door is to be inspected for damage as well. Slide the door back and forth. It should move freely. Observe that the door fits securely in the two retaining straps and that the retaining pin is attached to the bulkhead. Now close and lock the door and proceed to the landing gear. First, check the forward cross tube landing cap retention assembly. Be certain that the rubber bumper pads are in good condition, properly in place, and that the cross tubes are fully seated. Now move to the aft cross tube and check it in the same manner. Special attention is given to the attaching points of the forward and aft cross tubes and skids. Be especially alert for cracks and missing or broken bolts. Inspect the skid shoes to ensure that the forward portion overlaps the aft and that they are serviceable and secure. Security is accomplished by either bolts or clamps. Now check the cargo hook to ensure it's centered. Now open the engine cowling and check for signs of leaks and chafing on tubing. Inspect the quick disconnect lines to be positive the small locking safety pins are extended properly. On ratchet lock nut couplings, check security by hand. Close and check security of the cowling. Open the forward electrical compartment. Check for general condition and security. Close the compartment door. The next step is the aft electrical compartment. Inspect for general condition and security. All leads must be capped and anchored. Shock mounts must be secure, and circuit breakers must be in. When completed in this area, close the compartment door. The tail rotor drive shaft coupling is next on this pre-flight. Open the inspection port. Check the security of the hangar assembly. Carefully examine the drive shaft clamps. They must be mounted at a 90 degree angle to each other. Move your fingers over the hangar bearing face. You should feel no trace of grease. Check the drive shaft for evidence of scoring and distortion. Inspect the drain tubing line and be certain the small locking pins are extended properly. 
visually check the tailpipe to be certain it is secure and has no dents or cracks. Note, check for any foreign objects. Secure the access door and proceed to the aft fuselage. Check the tail boom for missing or loose rivets and the tail rotor drive cover to ensure all Zeus fasteners are secure. Move under the tail boom and see that the three structural panels are secure and that all bolts are in place. None of the bolts can be loose or missing. Next, inspect the synchronized elevator for missing rivets, cracks, and any other damage. There may be slight play when it is moved. If there is any doubt as to the amount of play, request a technical inspector to verify the condition. Then, inspect the VOR antenna on the tail boom. It should be secure and undamaged. Next on our pre-flight is the main rotor blade. Scan the blade for skin wrinkles, dents, and scratches. Untie the main rotor blade and rotate it 90 degrees to the fuselage. As one of the tail rotor blades reaches its lowest point, begin the tail rotor inspection. Check the blade for condition, nicks, scratches, and dents. Push the tail rotor blade with your hand. It should flap freely. No cushion should be felt before contacting the stop. Be certain the proper crosshead assembly is installed on the aircraft you are pre-flighting. All nuts must have cotter pins installed. This is very important. On the H model, and on the D, and some Bs as well, the long or six-inch crosshead assembly is used. The six-inch crosshead assembly is identified by the space between the attaching nuts and the assembly yoke. The shorter five-inch assembly should not be used on the H model. Now look at the pitch change links. You should be able to see the top of the rivet head. If you cannot see it, do not fly the aircraft. Check the tail rotor retaining nut for security. Grasp the tail rotor by the leading and trailing edge and push it to the inboard stop. Attempt to change the tail rotor blade pitch manually. The pitch change link should not have excessive play. Also check clearance of tail rotor and vertical fin. Here again, if there is doubt as to the amount of play, call a technical inspector to verify the condition. Check the other blade in the same manner. Remove the tie down and place it in the cabin. Check the aft fuselage extension covers, ensuring they are secure and in good condition. Go to the tail skid and check for security, cracks, dents, and permanent buckles. Check the navigational light for security and condition. See that the FM antenna faces aft and away from the tail rotor. Go on to the tail rotor 90 degree gearbox. Here you inspect for leaks, damage, cracks, and proper fluid level. Check that the fluid filler cap is on. Now move down to the 42 degree gearbox. Check for leaks, damage, cracks, and proper fluid level. Check that the fluid filler cap is on. Now check the VOR antenna located on the tail boom. We are checking for security and damage. 
Next, inspect the synchronized elevator for missing rivets, cracks, and other damage. There may be slight play when it is moved. If play appears excessive, call for verification by a technical inspector. The right side of the tail boom is next. There should be no missing or loose rivets, cracks, dents, or other damage. to the oil cooling fan compartment. Inspect the tail rotor servo assembly for leakage, damage, and security. Check the four tail boom attaching bolts for slippage marks. Look at each one of them. Look down the tail boom, checking cable connectors and condition. If the battery is located in this compartment, check that it is secure and the cables to it are connected. Check the vent lines. Check that the circuit breaker is in. Physically move all push-pull tubes to confirm security. All models of the UH-1 require a check of the cooling fan, which should move or spin easily. The guard is to be secure. Check to see that the structural support is installed. You are not to fly without it. Close the door and open the tail rotor drive shaft inspection port. Check security of the hangar assembly and for any foreign objects. Secure the port and move to the heater compartment. See that nothing is stowed in this area. Close the compartment door. Open the engine cowling. Check for signs of leaks and chafing on tubing. Inspect the quick disconnect lines to be sure small locking safety pins are extended. Ensure that the cowling and access doors are secured for flight. Inspect the navigation lights for security and general condition. Now check the cargo doors. Slide the cargo door back and forth, being certain it moves freely, and that the door fits securely in the two retaining straps. Be sure the retaining pin is attached to the bulkhead. Now inspect the emergency exit door. Close and lock the doors. The entrance door must be checked for operation and condition. Open the door. Check the ejection mechanism. Now close the door and check that the two pins on the ejection mechanism are protruding. Then secure the entrance door. The right side landing gear is next on this inspection checklist. First check the aft cross tube landing cap retention assembly. 
Be certain the rubber bumper pads are in good condition, properly in place, and that the cross tubes are fully seated. Now move to the forward cross tube and check in the same manner. At this time, inspect the attaching points of the cross tubes and skids. Be especially alert for cracks and missing or broken bolts. Inspect the skid shoes to ensure forward portions overlap the aft and that they are serviceable and secure. This concludes part one of the UH-1H preflight procedures, which must, in all cases, be performed in accordance with the appropriate checklist. Again, we emphasize the importance of critical areas. If there are any questions, call a technical inspector to verify the condition of the component in doubt. This preflight of the UH-1H will be concluded in part two of this presentation. Part 1 of the UH-1H preflight covered inspection of our aircraft up to the main rotor system. In the second part of this presentation, we again stress the importance of sequentially following the appropriate checklist procedures. If at any time there are any questions on any component, ask a technical inspector to verify the condition of that component. The safe completion of the mission depends on your care in completion of this preflight. One of the most critical areas of the UH-1H is the main rotor system. It is of vital importance that you, the aviator, understand how to preflight the main rotor system correctly and understand what you are looking for. An important point to remember is that all nuts are either self-locking or have a cotter pin properly and securely installed. The first area in part two of the UH-1H preflight is to ensure that the main rotor retaining nut is fully seated and that it is secured by the retaining nut lock. The retaining nut lock must be properly safetyed. Now check the pillow blocks for security and see that they are half full of oil. Move to the mixing lever. Check the mixing levers for security and excessive play. Also inspect it for damage, nicks or cracks. Check the stabilizer bar for nicks, dents, and scratches. The tip weight of the assembly bar must be checked for security. Note the safety wire. Check the tip weight on the other end in the same manner. Be certain the stabilizer bar is secure. Examine the pitch change links. They may have slight play, but must be secure and safetyed. The safety wiring must be installed correctly to prevent loosening. Check the control tubes for scratches, security, and that there is no metal-to-metal -metal contact where connected. Slight play is allowed in both the upper and lower bearings. The damper arms are next to be inspected and they must be secured and undamaged, although a slight amount of play is allowed. Now examine the stabilizer dampers for leaks. Also notice the damper fluid level. If low, the damper should be refilled. Check to see that the dampers are secure. Proceed to the main rotor group. Check the blade grip reservoir for correct amount of fluid, security, and cranks. The blade grip reservoir should be filled to center bolt level. If the reservoir is dry following a two-hour flight or 24-hour static position, you must contact a technical inspector for further verification. Move to the main rotor grip. Inspect it for scratches or dents. Test the drag brace for play. None is allowed. There are two drag brace bolts on each blade. 
confirm they're being secure. Check the blade retaining bolt for security and ensure that the safety nut and bolt are in place. Inspect the top of the main rotor blade for scratches or dents. Make sure the trim tabs are present and the leading and trailing edges of the main rotor blade are in good condition. Now proceed to the pitch change horns and check them for security, nicks, cracks and positive safety. Next, check the rotor mast. Look for scratches and dents. No dents are allowed. Check to see that the static stops are not cracked or broken. Continue your inspection down the mast to the boot. The boot must show no damage or tears. Examine the scissors and sleeve assembly for wear, damage, excessive play, or cracks. Next are the drive links, which must have equal play on either side. Also, the straight side must be in the direction of rotation. Check the trunnion bearing for no bearing rotation. Next, give your attention to the swash plate and support assembly. Again, observe for cracks, nicks, and dents. There should be no vertical play in the swash plate. Now, reach through the opening in the collective sleeve and check for looseness of the collective sleeve assembly by pushing on the exposed portion. The sleeve assembly should be completely secure. Inspect the collective lever halves for nicks, scratches, and security. There should be no movement. Grasp the collective push-pull tube and check for any sign of vertical play. Visually inspect the collective servo cylinder tube for security, scratches, damage, and any signs of lateral play. Be certain the boot is not damaged and has no signs of oil leakage. Inspect the transmission mounting bolts for slippage and check transmission for oil leakage. Now move to the left lateral cyclic servo Check the cylinder tube for security and lateral play. Then inspect the boot for any sign of damage or oil leakage. Make sure the spring is installed on the swash plate on the right side. Check the right lateral cyclic servo. Again, check the cylinder tube for security and lateral play. Inspect the boot for any damage or oil leakage. Now grasp the synchronized elevator control and check for excessive play. Ensure that all bolts are secure. All tubing is to be secure and there must be no sign of leaking oil. Check security of the transmission oil and hydraulic fluid caps. Now inspect the short shaft for damage. Ensure that the bolts in the clamp set are 90 degrees apart, secure, and bolt heads are in the direction of rotation. In the cowling area, there should be no signs of oil or grease. If you see any at all, request a technical inspector. The engine air intake is next for inspection. It should be clean and clear of any obstructions. Now check the engine and transmission cowling for security.
a visual inspection of the anti-collision light is required. The light should be securely mounted and in good condition. Move forward and see that all antennas are in good condition and secure. Visually inspect the cabin top ventilators to confirm no obstructions. Check the pitot tube for security and see that static ports have no obstructions. To complete the pre-flight of this UH-1H model, go to the interior of the aircraft and check the cargo compartment. The fire extinguisher is next. The seal must not be broken. Check to see that it is secure. If cargo is aboard, ensure that it is properly loaded and tied down. Passenger seats and seat belts must be secure. Then check the transmission oil level. Press the interior light switch on the transmission island and visually inspect the oil level through the inspection port. Be sure the oil is at its proper level. On this H model, you must view into the forward port to check the hydraulic inline filter for extension of the differential pressure switch. If the red button is visible, the filter should be clean before flight. Check the electrical outlets for condition. Inspect the condition of the crew member's radio panel and confirm selector in the intercom position. Be certain all loose equipment is tied down with a seat belt or secured in the cargo compartment. The equipment includes the rotor blade tie down, pitot tube cover, and tailpipe cover. Be certain that first aid kits are aboard, in good condition, and secured in their proper locations. Check the seals for security. This concludes the pre-flight of the UH-1H. Always remember that any time you are in doubt concerning the tolerances of any aircraft components, call for a technical inspector to verify the condition of that part.